Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have for you so many fun Dollar Tree Farmhouse Christmas ornaments for you guys. So let's not waste any more time and let's get to crafting. To start off, I spray painted two little buckets from Dollar Tree, a circle, a star, and three snowflakes from Dollar Tree as well. While that was drying, I took this cross from Dollar Tree. This cross was in the crafter square section, and I took this pair of angel wings, and I just clipped the tags off of them. The cross had a hole in it, so I did take my lightweight spackling and I just cover that hole up. And then once the hole was dry, because it does take like five minutes to dry down before you can paint it, I took my silver paint from Arteza and it is um, like an outdoor paint, so it dries pretty quickly and it gives a really, really nice shine to it. So I really love this paint so much, you guys. I've been using it on a ton of stuff, and if you ever wanna get any of the items that I use, I will mention it, but if you don't hear me mention it, I will link as much as possible in the description box below. So I did give this a good coat on the front and back because if you're hanging it on your tree, you might see the back of it. So I definitely wanted to cover that just in case you see it. Once I had that painted, then I set it aside to dry. I took these wood slices from Arteza and you guys, I love these wood slices. My husband did cut me some last year, but they weren't as smooth and they weren't as perfect as these. And they also come pre-drilled with the holes and it comes with twine in case you don't have a drill or twine on hand. They give you everything you need to make these ornaments. So here I'm just, I originally took out three and then I had so many ideas for these. So I did end up painting five black and five white and I did use my Arteza um, paint for the white and then for the black I used my Dollar Tree chalkboard paint. Now I didn't paint the entire circle um, or I should say I didn't paint the entire exposed wood. I did leave a little space on the edges just so that way you could tell that it was wood. So while those were drying, I took these two lanterns from Dollar Tree. These were also in the crafter square section and I thought they were so cute and so farmhouse and I knew that I could make them into ornaments really easily. So I did paint the one black and then I painted the other one white. And once again, while those are drying, I went on my computer, I just 
printed off some wording that I wanted, like all the Christmas sayings, joy, merry, bright. And then I did do the Norman family and M&M for Mark and Melissa and just some other random letters or wording like fresh and farm and I didn't end up using those but I wanted to have them on hand in case I did and then I also just searched on Google for um, this image and I printed them all out the ones that are going to go on the black you want to rub on the back with some chalk just so that way you can see what you're transferring obviously graphite paper would not work on black so chalk is your best bet and then I just transferred those um, wording onto the black ones so I knew that one of them I wanted this deer or I wanted a deer and I wanted it to be wood so I couldn't figure out what I was going to do and then I remembered that these little Mary signs had a deer at the end for the Y so I did just I did just take my utility knife and I scored along right where it meets the R and then I kind of just popped it off once I popped it off, I took my finger sander. This is in my Amazon favorites link below, and it is under micro zip sander. So I just sanded those little edges off because, um, like, there were splinters on the end, and then I painted that little deer white. Once I painted him white, then I took my Arteza um, paint pen. Sorry, you guys. As usual, it's 1.14 in the morning. Wow, I'm actually 16 minutes early. Can you guys believe that? <laughs> anyway, I went over the wording and these were working, but because they're a little bit of a bigger tip, it you couldn't really see the wording as good. So I do end up going in with my paint that I already got that I already showed you guys in the beginning from Arteza the outdoor paint and my little tiny brush from Arteza as well this actually comes in a pack with the wood slices the paint and I think it comes with um, maybe 10 tiny detail brushes don't quote me on that, but it does come with quite a few, just so that way you can do really good details on these wood slices or anything for that matter. So the Arteza link is in the description box below, and there are um, discount codes if you sign up for the email list, so definitely check that out. But anyway, um, I went in with my graphite paper to transfer on to the white wood slices. So once I had those transferred on, then I did go in with my black paint pen and I went over that wording as well. Again, I used my Sharpie paint pen just because the Arteza ones are a little bit of a bigger tip. And they do come with smaller tips, but I'm going to be honest, I was just being lazy, you guys. I did not feel like switching it out at the time, so I just grabbed what I had right in front of me. Once I had all my wording done and um, painted and then with the paint pen, then I took my chalk couture transfers and I knew that I wanted some farmhouse um, designs on here and this actually comes in a 12 pack of these small ones it comes in one sheet and then you cut them down so I did just take them lay them on the slices and then with chalk couture you just take their paste dab it around and then take your squeegee and you just pull it over your transfer and put the excess into the jars I am absolutely loving my chalk couture guys so definitely check the link in the description box.
If you guys are enjoying my channel and you're new, I would love it if you would stick around and become part of our crafty family by clicking the red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. If you enjoy it, please give this video a big thumbs up. All right back to the crafting so I take this jute from Dollar Tree and I just cut 10 pieces of the same length and then I just string them through our wood pieces and glue the bows down now like I said Arteza did have the jute already cut up in the box with the wood slices but once again, I was being lazy and didn't feel like pulling it back out. That's kind of like an oxymoron because I had to cut the pieces anyway, so I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I love the way these turned out, you guys. Like, I kind of feel like they came out of a magazine. Like, if I seen these in the store, I would totally pick them up and buy them. I don't know about you guys, but let me know in the comments down below if you would too. I forgot to mention that I did make five simple bows, um, five in the red buffalo check and five in the black buffalo check. And I didn't do this in any order. I just kind of grabbed a bow and grabbed a wood slice and put it down on there. Um, if you wanted them to be all red, you could do all red or all black, or you could even switch out the bow. Totally your preference, and it's totally up to you. Moving on to our little cross. Now, every year I make a ornament for my mom. She passed away when I was 22 years old, so this past summer was eight years, and I miss her every single day. I wish that she could have met my kids and my husband. And so anyway, this year I wanted to make another special ornament for her. And so this one is for you, Mom. So anyway, I just take my stamps from... I believe I got them at Target and I just stamped on rest in peace mom with the mom going down the cross and then I dry brushed with my chip brush all the way around the edges and then I just glued it right to my angel wings. Once that was glued down then I just took this black ribbon. I glued it at the bottom to keep it together and then I just glued it to the back of this cross. And then this one was really quick and easy to remember your loved ones in heaven. So I always get teared up making this one for her. You guys, she was my best friend and I miss her more than I could ever express. So anyway, enough of the sad stuff. Let's move on. So next I take all my pieces that I spray painted and I go over it with my elephant and a natural sponge. I get my natural sponges from Walmart in the craft section and they are in the brand Folk Art. So I just go around each and every one and there's really no rhyme or reason for this. Um, it's really to your preference. Like I always say, the elephant is going to tone that silver down, and then I do do the exact same thing with the white, but I go a little bit less heavy-handed with the white because the white is going to make it look like the galvanized metal. So once I have those all galvanized, then I take the, I forgot to mention that I did paint one of the snowflakes white. Or no, duh, I'm doing it right here. <laughs> okay, so I paint the snowflake white. And then once I had the snowflake painted white, then I go in with my drill and I drill around the circle, um, kind of like as if you were to cut a pizza. So in eight spots, 
you see me here I am marking it just so that way it's easier so I marked the top and the bottom side to side and so on and so forth and then I just take a drill bit and I drill all those holes for the star I did drill a hole in every point basically where every side meets if that makes sense so at the points and at in the middle Next, I just took my black buffalo check ribbon, and this is linked in my Amazon favorites. It's a really, really big roll and a really good deal, so I definitely recommend that. And they do have all different color buffalo check, but I do just tie it to the end of this really, really big needle. I forget what this needle is called. If somebody knows, leave it in the comments down below. But anyway, I just basically weave it through our ornament wherever I uh, drilled a hole and this just kind of give it a rustic farmhouse look um, I actually made these last year as well as the buckets but with the buckets I go a step further than I did last year but I, everybody loved them so much and there's literally 22,000 new people probably even more than that so I did want to bring this one back since it was a fan favorite last year but once I was all done with these I realized that you could personalize these really really easily with stamps or rub on transfers or even my method of printing them off and transferring the wording or whatever and then going over it with your paint pen it's totally up to you and all these are really versatile to your style and colors whatever you like just switch it up to suit your decor next I take my black paint pen from Arteza and I just kind of highlighted those uh, lines in the snowflake or the design in the snowflake I should say and so I just drew lines and then I drew dots at the edges of my lines and I did do that for all three um, the white one I did it with black and then I did black on one of the galvanized uh, snowflakes and then white on another one and then I took my little buckets and these are smaller stamps from Target and I did just stamp on one of them reindeer food you feed and then on the other one I did snowballs I drew five cents because I did not have a stamp of a five and then at the bottom I stamped on all day and then so this is what I did different from last year last year I left the buckets just plain galvanized this year I did the wording and then I took some cotton balls I stuck them in the snowball ones and then a couple of the top I just took and I glued them down with some hot glue just because I, I knew that I didn't have to glue them all. If I just glued the top ones, then they'd kind of then they would kind of keep them in place. And then for the reindeer feed, I could not figure out what I was gonna use. And then I got the bright idea, or actually I should say my best friend told me to use oatmeal, and I was like, hey, that's a really good idea. So I just poured some oatmeal at the bottom. I put a nice layer of hot glue like halfway up. I poured some more in there, put another layer of hot glue. I then finished it off with a top layer. And then I didn't show it because I did it later on, but I did end up just putting a little bit of Mod Podge on the top of this just so that way it could definitely keep it in place and it will last for years to come. So I am in love with the way these little buckets turned out. Sometimes when I'm crafting, like originally I was just going to do the exact same thing. And then I was looking at them and I'm like, how can I step this up a notch? So 
usually you guys the ideas just come to my head as I'm crafting and that's the beauty of crafting sometimes you just never know how it's going to turn out and you just kind of go as you know come up with what you're doing as you go <laughs> if you guys do that let me know in the comments down below but like I said usually I have one thing in my head and it turns out to be something totally different so anyway once I was done doing that then I did just take two pieces of jute and tied one piece around each of the handles just so that way you can hang it from your tree or if you're just putting it if you're putting them in like a tiered tray or something then I wouldn't worry about the jute on the handle I did end up taking it off to take pictures just because it kind of looked funny but I will add them back on once I put my tree up. So for the snowflakes, I did the same thing. I strung some jute through the snowflakes and then I made hangers with the buffalo check for the circle and the star. And then I f went around the edges with some ink waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. And then for the snowflakes, I had these little tiny ornaments from Amazon. They are linked in the description box below. And it comes with a ton of them. They're like little tiny and they're so cute. I don't know about you guys, but I love miniature anything. Uh, I'm just a sucker for minis. So when I saw these, I just had to have them. But... Um, I thought that the snowflakes were missing a little something and I like the look of natural wood against them so I did just take out three different snowflakes I believe two snowflakes are the same and then one is different and I glue those to the middle but first I take my antique wax and a little brush and I just go around all the pieces to make it look really look like rust <laughs> oh, this is becoming a thing 1 30 in the morning and I can't talk so anyway I love the way that this antique wax looks I've tried it with the truffle Waverly chalk paint before and it just doesn't look as good I think because this antique wax is kind of see-through it's not as thick so it really gives a nice look anyway again once I was done with the antique wax then I do just glue those little snowflakes down into the middle of the snowflakes with some hot glue all right you guys moving on to the little lanterns these were super super easy but i just took my chip brush and i dry brushed all the way around the white one with some ink waverly chalk paint and i dry brushed all the way around the black with white waverly chalk paint stay tuned you guys i know that a lot of you guys can't find these chip brushes i did just order a couple packs so i'm going to be doing a giveaway for these I don't do these giveaways of these items to gain anything I just do it because I know that a lot of you can't find them or afford them or whatever so I hope you guys know that I am always thinking of you and 
I just love doing things, you know, small things like that for you guys because you guys have brought so much joy into my life and it's literally like the least I could do. I wish I could buy one for each and every one of you, but I would be broke as a joke. But anyway, I take my Canadian pine stems from Hobby Lobby. I cut one in half and then I just glue it in a circle for a little wreath. Once I had them glued together, then I glue them down. And then I take red pit berries from Dollar Tree and white pit berries. And I do the same thing. I just cut off a piece, glue the end, and glue it into a circle. And then glued that down. I made two simple bows, one in gold and one in red, and then I glued the red one to the top of the black lantern, or to the top of the wreath on the black lantern, and then the gold to the top of the wreath on the white lantern. And then that quick and easy, you have farmhouse ornaments. These do turn on and light up. I think that's like the best part of it and they're really super super cute and super super easy to get a high-end look if i saw these in the store i would pick them up as well anything that i make like i tell you guys all the time i would definitely buy from a store that's what i strive for on my channel high-end looking items for a super cheap price All right, last but most certainly not least, I had these tags from Dollar General, I believe, and I got them last year, but I have seen them this year, so I just flipped them over and I cut the tags off, and then I used my white Waverly chalk paint on one, and for the other one, I used my Arteza black um, acrylic paint. Now, I would definitely recommend to use the acrylic paint on the white one as well because I'm going to use my chalk couture transfers and they just work much better on acrylic paint. Oh, I guess those weren't my last ones. Duh. Um, I took these little circle chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree while the other tags were drying and I just transferred some more wording on there and I only do that on two and then for another one I am going to use something else but once I had the wording transferred then I did use my thinner white paint pen and I went over those letters. I did want to mention that I did use the font the skinny because I like the way that it looks like Ray Dunn so you can use whatever font you like but this is just the font that I used but as usual I'll leave all the information on font and font sizes in the description box in the materials list so for this other black one I took another chalk couture transfer and this is out of that 12 pack that I was talking about and I just took my paste put it on there I squeegeed it off and made sure that it was even I put the rest back in my jar because you don't want to waste any and then pulled it up that's what I love about chalk couture look how quick and easy that was to get such a detailed high-end picture and they have all different size transfers you guys big small medium you name it they have it so anyway I um, 
took some of this red wire I believe I got this from Hobby Lobby and I just cut some pretty long pieces you want to have longer pieces so that way you have plenty of room to tie it together and put your beads on so I did use 25 beads for each and then at the end I um, wrapped it around to keep it together like in the middle where the two ends meet and then with the excess wire I did just make a little hanger just by twisting it and then these chalkboard tags are already on strings so I just put a dab of hot glue right in the middle wrapped it around and then put some more hot glue to keep the end down and I did do that for all three once I had those all um, put together I made three simple bows two of the red buffalo check one of the black buffalo check and this is actually a bigger print buffalo check and I did get this ribbon from Walmart and I just glued those all down in the middle with some hot glue I don't know these are one of my favorites per usual I can't ever choose but let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite so once those were all done so cute so high-end looking I just can't believe it like sometimes I can't get over that I make this stuff myself because like I said if I seen it in the store I would definitely pick it up All right, you guys, now we're coming towards the end. So I took this Chalk Couture transfer. I put it down. It's a little deer and a Merry Christmas. So I did do the deer in the black. And once again, I just put my paste on there. I squeegeed it off and then I pulled up the transfer. I didn't show it, but because I used chalk paint, um, it did leave like a teal residue so I did just go over that with some uh, white paint and then I did the Merry Christmas with my red chalk paste so like I said if you're going to use if you're going to get these and use acrylic paint then the residue will not come off on your project so for the next one I took this it's called a tag transfer and I did that with my gold chalk couture paste and then I took it came with this little circle piece and I did do the circle piece in white chalk paste now the way that I get these to dry really quickly is I just blow dry it real quick that way you don't have to wait till it dries to do your next layer and that's what I love about Chalk Couture you guys I've been using Chalk Couture on my channel for a very long time I just always use chalk paint and the person I used to get it from would always tell me don't use it use our paste and now I know why because it just goes on much more easily and smoothly they're easier to clean um, they don't leave such a stain on your transfer and your transfer is going to last so much longer so don't think that I'm just plugging this because I'm a de designer now I have been using these transfers for a very long time and they're really really high quality so if you want more information on it just shoot me an email my email is in the description box but anyway I took a another Mary ornament from Dollar Tree I painted it red and then I went around the edges with some white Waverly chalk paint just to distress it a little bit but anyway um, once I had that all dry brushed I did do this little deer that I got in a pack from Amazon and I was going to put a velcro dot on the back of each just so that you could change it out but I wasn't really too crazy about how the deer looked in the middle so um, it's up to you whatever you put in there but 
I personally did not like it for myself. So I did just go ahead and glue the Mary down um, just so that it would be permanent since I wasn't going to switch it out. And then I grabbed some jute. I gave it a jute hanger. And then for the Merry Christmas one, I made a bow. And I took the red pit berries from Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around my pencil. And then kind of made like two curly cues, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then I glued them down on each side at the top and then glued the ribbon down. I did get my ribbon from Walmart. It was actually in the gift wrapping section. Um, definitely check your local Walmart in the gift wrapping section because they have gift wrapping ribbon and it's really high quality and nice ribbon. Last year I got some and I ran out and I wish that I had grabbed more while it was there so this year I definitely won't make that mistake again but anyway after I had the Merry Christmas stuff or Merry Christmas tag stuff glued down the ribbon and the pit berries then I go over to the Merry sign I took a quarter of the Canadian stem two pieces and I folded them into kind of like a V and then glued them on each side I made another simple bow out of just some red ribbon and then glued that to the top as well and then that was it you guys all these projects were so quick and easy and they have such a high-end look so whatever theme you got going on for your Christmas tree you could make all of these or just certain ones and um, they're all different styles and patterns and so so much versatility with all these ornaments but I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely click that subscribe button. If you want to become part of the Crafty family, I will be doing a giveaway for Christmas, you guys. I want you guys to get something for yourself. A lot of times as parents, we don't think about ourselves. We're constantly thinking about someone else or if you're you just have a significant other or whatever the case may be sometimes we forget about ourselves and I want to do something nice for you guys to do something nice for yourself <laughs> so anyway you don't want to miss anything I have still got so much coming up I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart I appreciate each and every one of you for coming back each and every week, leaving me such kind comments and, you know, just asking me how I am. So I really do appreciate you guys. I'm humbled by you guys. You guys are important. You guys are my family. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would like it as well. And I will catch you guys next week. Bye.